On today's episode of Behind the Find, I want to talk about something that's garnered quite a bit of attention on this show, and I finally have them, and I can tell you a little bit more about them in full detail, and that's the Sega Genesis speakers. As video game collectors, there are two things we do really well, buy video games and show them off. But sometimes our treasures deserve to be seen in deeper detail. Today, let's get into Behind the Find. So without backtracking too much, if you're completely new to our show, my buddy Ricky and I were out game hunting. Long story short, he knew that I wanted Sega stuff. He found a pair of Sega Genesis speakers, which I had no idea existed. To be honest, nobody in our squad knew existed. Ricky found them first, first come, first serve. He got them. Yes, I was very jealous, and I thought I'd never see a pair again. But, you know, I, I, I like the obscure things. I, it's just what I like to collect, and I saw these speakers. Upon going home, I looked on eBay, Mercari, OfferUp, Craigslist, everything. They are pretty much non-existent. Nobody has them, or at least nobody has them that wants to sell them. But very recently, someone who watches the show, yes, thank you again very much, sent me a pair of the Sega Genesis speakers. <laughs> oh my gosh! Ah, oh, he did it, bro! And today, I looked into more detail so I can give you guys a little bit more info about them than other than the fact that I just really want them. And also, I'm gonna test them out. So these speakers absolutely were not for sale to the public. It was not something anybody could just go and buy. There was only one way from what I've looked upon researching on the internet, only one way to get a hold of these speakers. And in 1990 and also 1991, Sega would run these different ads and different promotionals and all different sorts of magazines and clip-on coupons and all different things like that. And really what the promotion was is if you buy three Sega Genesis games, Games, they would send you these speakers, but it wasn't just any Sega Genesis games And I know maybe this might not be the most interesting thing But let me read you the games that they were expecting you to buy and prove your purchase and then they'd send you these speakers All right, I just looked again. There's quite a few of them I don't know if you really want to hear me read them all, but I'm gonna do it anyway quickly Thunder Force 2 Last Battle Ghouls and Ghosts Zoom Alex Kidd and the Enchanted Castle Rambo 3 Ghostbusters Forgotten World Mystic Defender E-SWAT Fantasy Star 2 Sword of Vermilion, Mickey Mouse, Castle of Illusion, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, Super Thunderblade, Space Harrier 2, Super Hang On, Afterburner 2, The Revenge of Shinobi, Golden Axe, Super Monaco GP, Truxton, Dick Tracy, Strider, Dynamite Duke, Columns, Tommy Lasorda's Baseball, Pat Riley's Basketball, World Championship Soccer, Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf, James Buster Douglas Knockout Boxing, Cyberball, and Joe Montana Football. Something I started looking into in a little more detail when I got a little bit more excited about these and wanted to purchase them and wanted to own a pair, well, was were they completely a novelty item or were they something that actually, let's say, enhanced our performance? Did they make sound actual better? Did they have any actual purpose besides just being a cool extra thing that you could get in the 90s, which was really popular to do? I'm gonna answer that question in one second, but I wanna read you some of the specs that Sega included when telling us about these speakers. Well, first of all, it says plug them into your Sega Genesis and experience true stereo sound. Built-in 7-watt amplifier, they're multi-purpose and they can also be used with most portable CD and cassette players. Individual bass boost and treble controls, individual volume control for each speaker. The most important one plugs easily into the stereo headphone jack on your Sega Genesis system and requires 4C batteries, batteries not included, but take note that that's only if you want to use them portably and not plug them into any sort of wall outlet jack. Now I think it's really important to circle back to the question we had a few seconds ago and that we read a little bit of a topic on, a little bit of a bullet point on, is that these plug directly into your Sega Genesis. Very important here, Sega Genesis Model 1. Now this comes to us directly from Sega Retro and this is really important to take note of. At the time, it was not uncommon for televisions to only output sound through one speaker and likewise the original Sega Model 1 can only output stereo sound via its built-in headphone socket. The idea then was that if these speakers were plugged into the Mega Drive or Sega Genesis console, users could experience better quality sound with their games. I know now it's completely commonplace to have stereo sound and to have all those abilities, but yeah, you couldn't get stereo sound out of these things unless you plugged in directly to here. And what I said was really important, and I wonder if you caught it, is that yeah, 
The reason I repeated Model 1 over and over and over is because Model 2 Sega Genesis, which is what I mostly have hooked up in my house, they don't have headphone jacks. There's no way to plug these in. So I kept diving deeper and digging deeper into these Genesis speakers. How deep does this wormhole go? Not very deep at all. Honestly, it's simply what I stated to you. Promotional speakers, buy three games in order to get them, and pretty much the only other thing I found out really is, yeah, they were pretty much made just to give you stereo sound out of your Model 1 only Mega Drive or Sega Genesis. But to be honest, the real question, how do they sound? Do mine work? Let's find out right now. Well, go figure, I had my Model 1 all set up and ready to go. I don't have all the right cables for it. I only have all the cables for the Model 2, which I have hooked up. So regardless, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a test plugging into one of my old VHS TVs that has a headphone jack that I can play like an old VHS video game type movie in there so I can get like a little bit of a retro feel. Let's see if these things work and how they sound. That's really what's important. All right, everybody, good news, and I know this isn't the best way to do this, but my tripod doesn't really work over here, and yes, they turn on. Look at that. Woohoo! Uh, I'm honestly very excited about this. To be honest, this uh, is pretty thrilling for me, knowing that these things work. Uh, it makes me happy. Uh, guy, but I gotta test them out right here. I have a VHS TV that I'm gonna go plug on right now. Plug on, turn on, I'm gonna press play. This is all live, as you guys see. So, okay, this is without the speakers. So the speakers clearly are not plugged in right now. Listening to the sound. Watch out for the spikes. I'm gonna turn these up a little. Kill Bubble Man and get the air gun. Here's the test, everybody. Are we ready? We're ready. Now we're ready to take on air. Hey look, he said we're ready too. Here we go. I know this is horrible filming, guys, but that's the only way that's working. Uh-oh. <gasps> Jump the tornadoes to kill airmen. Wow, those sound loud. Wow, they work. To be clashman, start Are they work and sound good. Let's, let's, let's let you guys hear for a sec. To get past this guy, jump out, then jump back. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. just stop the VHS so you guys can hear me, but I am beyond thrilled, honestly, genuinely, very, 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 very happy that not only do I have these, but they work. And there you have it, my Sega Genesis speakers, they work. I can't believe this journey of the way it happened of not knowing that they existed, to seeing them, and to being, to seeing them being snaked right underneath my hands, rightfully so, he did nothing wrong, first come, first serve, but then to not only that, but to go look for them, go on a treasure hunt to try to find them not being able to find them. Completely stop talking about them for like a month and a half, two months, and someone from the audience, which is a really cool dude from Respawn Records, by the way, sends me a pair. I forget to check them out to see if they work. I'm just so excited to have them in my possession. I'm gonna be honest, I've been crying about it for months. <laughs> to going to testing them, to seeing them turn on, but then to see them actually work, and for me, these old VHS how-tos are very nostalgic for me. I'd say maybe, maybe even more nostalgic than actually playing the Sega Genesis because I grew up watching these VHSs. So to see these speakers with this VHS playing that sound out, they sounded loud, by the way, very impressed at the way they sound and then learning the history behind them about what you needed to get them, why they used them, the, that they didn't work on Model 2s and all that. Nothing too deep, but just love how this whole story unfolded. I mean, I know all, all of you might know as well too that I'm hardcore collecting pretty much only Sega Genesis stuff. So I feel like I'm just having such a fun time. I'm diving into the Sega world. As you may know, I'm a huge collector for video games, but Sega is more of a new thing for me. Yes, played it as a kid all the time. A huge part of my life, but never collected for it deep like I am now. And these Sega Genesis speakers just completely uh, Blew my mind. I'm so happy to have them and I'm thankful you guys are here on the journey with me and everything I'm doing. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Honestly, you guys are all awesome. Thanks for uh, making me smile every day in this community. All right, everyone. Have a good one.